at this point, we will return back to Daytona. Now, in the clouds to here, we have to find a good area to descend, so we stay VFR. And we'll uh, head back to Daytona and make our way back uh, home. So we'll start a descent. Back to Daytona, so... Bit of good area in front of us. Nice and clear. If you look there, you see all the clouds on to the left and right. Uh, it's all clear down there. We'll descend uh, below the clouds, at least 500 feet below the clouds. All descending 2,000 RPM. Horizon about two to three inches above the magnetic compass. We may have to push in a bit of lift right on the descent. Maintain coordination. It's typical with a single engine aircraft. Descent down to about 1,600 uh, feet today. Now, uh, you got to be careful when descending down to lower altitudes. Uh, you want to make sure that you're not going to, uh, there's not going to be no obstructions that will be a uh, problem to you. So, what we're going to do is look at our sectional chart. I'm trying to say the traffic power of 1,703 is at 2,000 feet on Guano uh, doing uh, holes. Uh, look at our sectional chart. And we're looking for these numbers right here. These blue numbers, they're called MEFs, Maximum Elevation Figures. In each quadrant, that shows us the highest obstacle in that quadrant. So that will at least tell us that if we're above that altitude, we shouldn't uh, get into uh, problems with the obstructions. Now, there's minimum safe altitudes we have to watch out for. Things like uh, if we're in a congested area, we have to be 1,000 feet above the congested area. Other than that, we have to be 500 feet above any residential, uh, any uh, rural areas. and then. There's other, uh, other stipulations, but for the most part, the easy way to remember is we'll stay at least about uh, 1,000 feet above our central congested areas, 500 feet above our other areas. For now, there's other regulations that do apply. 4,200 clouds will go to the final day for our lady. As you're ascending, you might have to do the Ralph Salve maneuver to clear your ears. This being an unpressurized aircraft, uh, you can try yawning or just holding your nose and gently kind of blow up your nose to equalize the pressure in your ears. Let's get down to a safe altitude, 1,600. Uh, we'll stabilize the aircraft. I'll enrich the mixture slightly here in our descent. Since so we're going to need more fuel at lower altitudes. Distance for just a pin star, 306, a cool on me on, we are 3 miles north, like distance. We're watching out for cars, looking out for traffic. Now, what you can notice here from our MFD is that Daytona is all the way out to the east of us. We're quite a ways away. In fact, we're probably almost near to about 40 miles away from Daytona. 20, 20 miles, sorry. 20 miles away from Daytona. Uh, so, we still got quite a bit of uh, uh, time to fly around and stabilize the aircraft. Uh, 1,600. We'll look up at the clouds. This is about 500 feet below the clouds, so we'll go down to 1,500 just to make sure that we're cleaning the 500 feet below the uh, clouds of this airspace. Here's 1,500 feet, 10% power of the VSI, you're going to add the power. Now at lower altitudes you may not need as much power as you need up at high altitudes since the air is more dense here. Yeah. 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 So you probably only need about 2300 RPM at this altitude. But again, those are ballpark figures. Adjust it as you need to maintain the performance you want. Alright, so stabilized. Do our cruise checklist. Power set mixture. We're enriched it uh, a couple turns in since we descended at about 2,000 feet. So about a half a turn in. A quarter turn for each 1,000 feet. And we'll just verify the checklist to make sure we run through the cruise checklist properly. Plus set mixture really lean and lights on, so cruise checklist complete. Next thing we're going to do is get the ATIS for Daytona to verify what runway they're using, what the weather is like at the airport, and any notams. So again, 132.875, we'll get a pen and paper out, copy down. Surface markings non-standard. Runway 25 left, copies are out of service. <laughs> Read back all runway hold short and start. Pressure, I've been contacted all runway hold short and start. Okay. All aircraft are free to go to the 1-2-3-0-7. Since we're kind of far away from and the airport, we don't want to go to the airport. We don't want to go to the airport. We don't want to go to the airport. Even though we're not going to go to the airport. 
Northwest one, one seven left, two five right is closed. Northwest right, two five right, ILS service. 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 Northwest right, two Other information to Daytona Beach International Airport information uniform one three five three Zulu observation wind two three zero seven visibility one zero few clouds two five thousand temperature two nine or two point two six at two minutes three zero one zero. This is approach runway one six in New Zealand. Yeah, so runway one six. Intersecting runway. So what we'll notice is that information uniform winds are two three zero, giving us a right crosswind. Alternative three zero one zero. So we'll change the alternative setting to three zero one zero. And mm -hmm. runway 16 is still in use, and the note of it still applies, so watch out for that. So once we get the ATIS, next thing we'll do is contact the turn approach. Now we are in the north crisis area, if we look at our in-flight guide, north uh, approach control frequency is 125.8. We want to tell them who we are, where we are, and what we want to do. And we want to, what we want to do is be inbound full stop at Daytona. Phoenix Air, tree 2, turn right, direct, step down, turn the approach, straight in. Uh, the red seven and the fifty zero three two. Zero four seven zero. Do you want just the visual or the R N F? Zero four seven zero. I like the R N F. Roger. Daytona approach for the one eighty two is one mile east of Lake Jefferson, one thousand five hundred inbound full stop. Daytona information uniform. Zero four four two. Can I get R? Zero four four two. Can I get R? Zero three zero eight. Turn left heading three four zero. Three four zero. Zero three zero. Zero four seven zero. One four miles from Daytona Beach International Airport. Cross Tampa at 2,000. Clear on Avenue 16 approach. Cross Tampa at 1,600. Little four three nine. Cross Tampa 2,000. Cross Tampa 1,600. Close to the Avenue 16 approach. Phoenix Air Tree Two Two. Excuse me. One eight miles from Daytona Beach International Airport. Cross Tampa at 2,000. Clear on Avenue 16 approach. Cross Tampa at 1,000. Cross back wall. We get a free space spot to call them in again. A clear area to call them in again. And cross seven to one four six zero three and fifty zero three two. Eight eight zero three two one four. Correction one seven miles from Daytona Beach International Airport. Cross step at two thousand. Clear on Avenue only one six approach. Cross stem by at one thousand six hundred. There are six kilo bravo. There'll be numerous Cessnas on the beach. Regular people are at one thousand six hundred. Extend the range of visual search clearance. We have the approach. We'll keep an eye for the traffic. Let's go bravo. To get to the airport, you want to use the ABC checklist, get about the ATIS, we got a briefing, and then we'll do our checklist. So the ATIS, we'll now uh, fly through the three tank, let's join the final 1-6, and now we'll do our briefing. We're at a 4 5 2 day approach, are you on frequency? We're running on, uh, we're briefing on a 4 2 day turn approach, are you on frequency? Arrival plan, we're going to go straight. 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 Outside, Charlie, 6.20 minutes on our 8th flight guide. Hello, 422, radar contact 7 miles northeast, only make sure you're only 1-6. Hello, 
Portugal straight up towards us. He's on 6 kilo Bravo, the engine is on 150, just on the cruise connect tower. We can expect either a left turn uh, or an exit, or a center. 437 turn, left heading 110 on the south. To exit on to runway 2587 left, and there's a closed runway, but you only have to runway if you are cleared by air traffic control. 436 turn, first rider. We'll make sure we don't cross to that. So it'll be a left turn on Echo 3 or November. Please approach Turkey to 165 Fox, sir, with request. Unable any request at this time, remain at that choice. Approach 65 knots, no dust factors, uh, no dust factors will be applied. 37 Charlie, 12 o'clock, 3 miles, speed on 1,600. Uh, uh, Across slightly from the right. So watch out for that. So that's the arrival briefing. We'll stay with our checklist here. 412, turn right, heading 270. That's for real, 412, turn right, heading 270. Little 412, and uh, heading. 412, turn right, heading 280. 280, November 7, 3, 4, 3, 5, turn left, make sure to turn left. Where I was on post, left, straight, 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 November Beach, we, have, we can't descend unless they clear us to descend. But when they clear us to descend, we have to be careful that we don't descend into Oman Beach's airspace. So something that we can use is landmarks when deciding when to descend. And uh, once we get over Oman, we're going to look for actually the Florida Memorial Hospital that's close by. That's on the edge. Two, 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 turn ten degrees. Air space. Two, final for so these, when we beam the Florida Hospital, we know that's a good area to start descending, so we don't bust into Oman Beach's airspace. Please go to the descent. One thousand five hundred. Mm -hmm. One eighty two connect tower. Mm -hmm. One eighty two connect tower. Mm -hmm. Four six four uh, turn left. Tower frequency. We see the runway one six direction in front of us. We'll use our crab technique, which the winds are coming from the right. So we're actually going to look like we're facing to the right slightly, but we're actually going straight towards the runway. Daytona tower. One eighty two straight in one six. Little one eighty two Daytona tower. Roger. Continue for runway one six. Or 182 continue. All right, Thomas said continue, which means that we can continue for landing, which actually will be a clearance for us to descend since we did not get any altitude. Hey, little 412, runway 16. So even though we can't descend, yeah, we're going to right over Ormond Beach there, right now. We look out there at about 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, you'll see the Florida Hospital. 7435, turn left on the ground. So that's a good place to descend. Contact ground, 7345. We also don't want to descend premature because Altitude is pressure. So you want to plan your descent. But easy way to plan your descent. Is take your altitude. Take your first two digits. Take the first two digits. That was for 444. Divided by three. So we have 16. Divided by three. The close number to that is five. 444. Thank you. So 422. You're number three. Space is just for you. I'm not adding the air horn. That will give us a good three degree glide slope towards the airport. Already the 435, we'll see at 
Turn left out of the approach is, you're going to try to keep the aiming point stationary in relation to all the objects around it. Four, seven, five, 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 I put the nose down about two, three inches from its current position. I'll try that one for one six with you. Bill 464, Daytona Tire Roger, continue runway one six. Continuing for one six, Bill 464. Okay, we've been hunting on descent. Like I said, we're aiming to be about three miles in a thousand. Wind to five zero at six. Five zero, so we've got direct crosswind from the right. So we have to do, apply cross. Uh, technique, which we'll try and land with the right wheel first, then the left wheel. Then oh, 444, turn left onto using the runway there, kind of on point niner. We're well, using the right wheel to control the center line, line with the yeah, nose. Right. The nose keeping keep it aligned with the longitudinal axis, the center line, and keep the ailerons to control the drift of left to right of the center line. There's a thousand feet, and if we look at our distance, we're about three miles, so this is perfect. Now we're going to reduce the power slightly more, and we're actually trying to add some flaps now. So, 89 knots. We looked at the limitations, 110, so we're below 110, so 89 knots, flaps 10. We're going to start slowing it down to about 80 knots now. Looking at my aiming point, which my aiming point for today will be the runway numbers, I'm trying to keep the aiming point the same distance from the horizon throughout my descent. I'm also trying to keep the shape of the runway consistent. Uh, I'm looking for a trapezoidal shape. If it becomes too much of a rectangle, we know we're too high. Alright, here's 600 feet, 82 knots, which is below 85, flaps 20. Little 422, turn left in November and cut at ground point nine. Okay, to, 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 to the aiming point. 422, left in November. Controlling my airspeed with power, pitching for my point and my descent. Now, the pitch and power are related to each other, so it's not, you can't just, it's not Pure black and white pitch for us, pitch for flat pot, power for. This is little 182, runway 16, clear to land, wind 260 at 5. Little 182, clear to land, 16. Traffic. Little 435, number 2, runway 16, clear to land, wind 260 at 5. Little 435, number 2, clear to land, runway 16, thank you. Hey, look, yeah, little 464, you checked in. We're just trying to stabilize the approach. Little 464, yeah, we're here. Yeah. Start slowing down for me just a little bit. Two departures, I've already arrived. I'm going to be holding the line. Slow it down. Flying towards runway 16. We're going to start slowing the airplane down now. Slowly reducing the power. Putting our right tail on, left rudder. Phoenix 805, Daytona Tower, continue for runway 16. Traffic holding in position. We'll do that, continue for 16. Phoenix 805. Increasing back pressure on the landing, keeping the nose up. Just touching the end of the runway. Keeping the nose up as long as possible. No braking just yet until we're down to a safe taxi speed. I will probably break. Little 182, turn left on to Echo 3 or November. Cut at ground point, Niner. 182, Echo 3, ground point, Niner. We'll make sure that we taxi off the wrong way and we will taxi up to the intersection and hold short just before that. Just to leave enough, air, enough uh, space behind us for one other aircraft to taxi up behind us. We'll stop here, we'll switch to ground control frequency. Don't have to call them just yet, but we'll just make sure we're on the frequency. 16 in November, say your call sign. Alright, after landing checklist. The elevated trim to neutral. That's all well, flaps identified, we'll verify it, flaps up. We'll lean the mixture. 1200. Texas radio to the west. Uh, you want me to go beyond the traffic? Little 182, follow your company traffic off your right. Little 182, follow 422. 422, start your taxi. That's the test, 422. Uh, ground little 423, Romeo 3, taxi. Little 423, days on the ground, runway 16, taxi, the echo. Little 423, 16, the echo. Daytona ground with a 435, off runway 16, that building road, like the taxi back to the ramp. Little 435, Daytona ground, taxi, straight ahead. For the 435, taxi straight ahead to the ramp. Okay, so now we're back on the ramp. We'll notice that we have a left cornering headwind. We're on back on the Eagle Ops 
frequency, so we taxi on the ramp. And I'm on the center line, but again, got to make sure left and right that we clear. The center line does not guarantee that you will not hit anything. Uh, so you're always looking left to right to make sure that you're clearing all uh, obstructions and any other aircraft. And again, we're taxiing at a slow walking speed on the ramp, about 10 seconds from nose to nose. So we find our parking spot, we're parking in a very specific for this aircraft, 182 parks in Charlie, so Eagle Charlie, Charlie Eagle Charlie, uh, 18, so we have three rows, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and we're going to park in Charlie Row. Once we get to our parking spot, we'll talk about shutting the aircraft down. And we'll do that Go ahead, 451. Little 451, uh, can we get uh, a 20 minute extension? Uh, we're delaying back to it now. 451, extra 20. Thank you, 451. Alright, so here's our parking spot, Charlie 16. So we're going to slowly start turning into it, still maintaining a slow walking pace. And at this point, the white center line will, will go below our nose, so we kind of have to look just further on and extend the center line out towards that green uh, cat eye out there. So right about here, we'll roll out. I'll slowly park to go into our spot. And while on the left-hand side, what you'll notice down the bottom here is a little arch, an L shape. That's where we'll park our left wheel in. I can't see it from this position, but hopefully we get close enough. So what we'll do is do our shutdown checklist. So shutdown checklist, parking brake set. And power 12 volt is off. Throttle 1000 RPM. Extra idle cutoff, so pull the push the button in and pull the mixture all the way out to double shut off the engine. Once the prop has stopped, we'll take our ignition switch and put it to off and pull the ignition out and we'll clip the ignition right here on the top, navigation light off and shut down, checklist complete. So apart from ramping in, uh, we'll do the ramp in checklist, we'll call either data and tell them we're back, the last four hour times, our hops time and our tack time, and that'll give us total time and apart from that, we'll shut down, we'll secure the aircraft and we'll head back inside.